An Introduction to Fulcrum-Centric Leadership by Mike Lorario. This video was recorded in Memphis, Tennessee at the City Gear headquarters, February 7, 2017. Uh, if you've read my book or if you've gotten into it a little bit, you, you know that I use the playground seesaw as an analogy and an image for leadership. And there's, there's two ways I want you to think about this. And they are, you might imagine, the leader and leadership. So when you're the leader, let's say this person here, I don't know if you can see the, right? You're on one side and what's on the other side? The other side is everything else that's in the environment. Now in my book, I focus on that thing being the team that you lead as a leader, but it could be the boss. It could be the competition or, or this environment, the sales environment or whatever environment you're operating in. Because there's something else out there on the other side of that seesaw. But if we're talking about leadership, there's four of these seesaws. And they're called communications, adaptability, focus, and influence. And each one, what you're balancing is your natural tendency for that leadership domain and what the situation demands of you is on the other side. But this is, this is the image I want to carry with you. Now, I, I talk about in the book, and I got a lot of trouble initially with my wife for using this term, is the inner fat kid, right? Your tendency, your natural tendency, if you allow it to dominate, that's your inner fat kid. Take it over the situation. Now, nobody, nobody's having fun in this situation unless the heavier kid on the ground holding up the lighter kid in the air is, is a bully, and he's having the time of his life. But think about your organization that way. If you, if you let your natural tendency dominate in a situation where it's not the right thing to do, you keep the whole organization up in the air, and they're waiting on you to do something. So this is, this is an image I, I carry with me and I try to put out there is, is how we want to try to achieve balance in leadership and as a leader. Now if you know something about mechanics in the seesaw, this thing here is called the lever and this is called the fulcrum. And I like to say be the fulcrum because that's an image I want you to carry to remind you that when things are out of balance, to restore balance in a seesaw, there's two things you can do. You can, you can put more effort on one side, more weight, or you can lift up the weight or take some weight off on the other side. So as a leader, you're, trans you're constantly balancing between these two forces, your natural tendency and what the situation demands of you. And the only way you find balance is if you shift to what's needed in that time and that situation. So I remind people to be the fulcrum, to be the thing on which everything else balances. Three steps, three steps to uh, my model, which I call fulcrum-centric leadership. The first is to understand your natural tendency. And I know some of you have taken the leadership fulcrum assessment online. And that's a tool I developed to give you a number, right? I mean, a hard, a hard number to give you an idea of where you are on this scale in all four of these domains, communications, adaptability, focus, and influence. You know, Mike and I like to go shooting, right? And so you can shoot all day long and not know whether or not you're hitting something. Except that we put these circles on a bullseye and you can see how tight your shot group is or where you hit close to the center. Or you can shoot steel targets and now you get the sound of the bullet hitting the steel. But that's feedback. And it gives you an idea of where you are. Well, same thing with the leadership fulcrum assessment. You need to know where you are as your starting point. What's your natural default position? We were talking earlier this morning with Mike and it, it it requires you to be honest in how you answer the leadership fulcrum assessment because it's about your behaviors. How have you acted in the past? You can, be, you can kind of kid yourself and say that, oh yeah, I always give up my seat on the bus, right, to the lady, the pregnant lady or the old gentleman, when in fact you don't. Because you know it's maybe, the, you think it's the right answer to say that you give up your seat. But if you want to be honest with yourself, and you want to know what your true number is, when you take the leadership fulcrum assessment, you have to be, you have to be truthful. But know your, know your uh, natural tendency in each of the four leadership domains, step one. Step two, know what's going on in the environment around you. Know what's going on in the situation. And again, what's the situation? Well, the situation is the team you're leading. It's, it's the competition. It could be any one of these number of things that's going to have an impact on your ability to lead be the leader, the position, or to show leadership, whatever member of the team you are, to help get us to where we're trying to go. 
And then finally, be the fulcrum. Be the thing upon which everything else finds balance. Four domains, an opposite tendency for each one, that gives us eight tendencies. Now, I identify these tendencies as either being exclusive on one end and inclusive on the other end. What do I mean by that? Exclusive is a closed system. You're not bringing in anything from the environment or any inputs from anybody else. It's all you. And inclusive is just the opposite. That's all you do. You bring in inputs from the environment. It's an open system. So for each one of these, that far extreme tendency is going to either be exclusive or inclusive. And in between, there's, there's this variation, right, as you move towards the center from either end. Now look at these eight tendencies, right? Transmit, receive, and communications. Rigid and flexible for adaptability. Selfish and selfless for focus. And control and command. Now if I were to take a survey of you all right now, you'd probably, and, and just asked you, assign a positive value to one side and a negative value to the other. Where would you put the negative value? What, which of these things seems negative in general? The left, the exclusive tendencies, transmit, rigid, selfish, control. Those all sound negative, right? And, and we carry that bias with us quite often, especially with this selfish, selfless one. Um, I, I love this part of the model in my book because it forces people to think. And, and on the other side, these inclusive tendencies, they all sound good. Here's, here's what I want to tell you and what, I, what I'd love you to walk away from this discussion, if nothing else, with about this part of leadership and, and this discussion. None of those things is positive or negative when you take them in, in the context of a situation, right? In a given situation, these things that look like they're a negative might in fact be the right thing to do, which makes it a positive. So I'll give you an example. And you may, have, you may have seen this already in my book, but anybody ever flown on an airplane? Right? Okay. So every time you go on an airplane, what's the first thing they do before you take off? Safety briefing, right? right? They tell you how to put on your seatbelt, how to unbuckle your seatbelt. What's another thing they tell you about? Oxygen. If the plane, if we should experience a sudden loss of cabin pressure, in the unlikely event, right, what's going to happen? These yellow cups with these hoses and these bags are going to fall from the ceiling. Now, what's the next thing they tell you to do? Yeah, be selfish. They're telling you to be selfish, right? If you're sitting next to someone who needs assistance, put your mask on first before you come to their aid. Now, we could talk all day long whether or not that's selfish, and we can rationalize the outcome because they're telling you to be selfish so that you can help somebody else later. But don't kid yourself. This is a perfect example of something each and every time we get on an airplane, we are asked to be ready in the unlikely event, to engage in a selfish act because at that moment in time, it's the right thing to do. Okay, unlikely event, we hope. But it, it drives home my point, which is that the situation demands of us certain things at certain times. And it may demand of us that we go away from being selfless, even for a moment, to be just a little bit selfish or to act in our own self-interest. Um, I'm working with a young, young man in Fayetteville, North Carolina, where I live, who, who in November opened up his own uh, insurance company. And he sent me this great uh, note when he started reading Leadership and Balance. And he said, um, I am so, uh, so excited about being a leader of my own company, but I'm deathly afraid. I'm deathly afraid of, of showing up in leadership with these extreme, exclusive tendencies. And I'm so afraid of showing up with an exclusive tendency that I'm afraid that I'm going to be inclusive on this inclusive side when maybe I shouldn't. And I was like, holy cow, Thomas, you just, you just nailed in one short paragraph exactly my point about all of this. You've got to recognize what your tendency is, what your default position is. You've got to recognize that the situation may demand something differently of you, and you cannot be afraid 
to be the fulcrum.